Good afternoon folks, this is Paul Brake, your Newfoundland Libertarian. First I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Dell Power and VOCM Nightline for having me on on Thursday to talk with the people in Newfoundland a little bit about what it was like living on the light station in Fort Amherst and my father's job as a light keeper there and at Crepe Race and up at Camp Island. Uh, heard back from some of the listeners, they said they really enjoyed it. So that was good and I look forward to any more opportunities I might have to talk with the people of Newfoundland about the things of Newfoundland. And I'd like to talk to people about Newfoundland right now about something else. And I'm kind of aiming this as well as at some of the people in the mainland because uh, I'm kind of not liking some of the things I've been hearing what's going on. Now what I'd like to talk about is the uh, industry in Newfoundland. And we've had lots of, lots of industries. There's, you know, tourism and fishing and agriculture and, and mining and sealing and oil and gas and and a couple of our big industries, let's look at the fishing industry, because Newfoundland was really was built on the fishing industry. That's what started it all off, right? We, everybody came over to do some fishing, because the fish, the number of fish and the quality of fish was second to none. You could Apparently you could go fishing with a bucket when everybody first got over there hundreds of years ago. And we, we built a province on it, right? We fed the families and we worked. And what we didn't eat, we sold and used that money to build an economy and to build a province and to build cities and towns and roadways and railways and all the rest of it. And we did just fine until 1949 when we were all together, right? And then we joined Canada. And when we joined Canada, the whole idea was we were supposed to get some support from them. And I think what we've seen has is, is been just the opposite way around, is that they've been taken... And they've been taxing, but they haven't really been helping in ways that they were they, they said they were supposed to be helping. And that's cost the people in Newfoundland quite a bit. Now the fishery, like I said, started off when we started off, right? And every one of us got fishermen in the family, right? Most people still have boats, even if they're not commercial fishing, they're still going out and catching their own catch, right? And it all went great until 1951 was a big year, and in 1951 they started these factory boats coming from places like Norway and Russia and Japan and in the United States too. And these factory boats came up, and they didn't just catch fish and take them home, but on these boats they processed. So they would catch the fish, process them, can them, and then all they had to take back was the specific stuff that they had canned. So, so these giant ships are coming back, you know, they're pulling back 2,500, 3,000 tons of fish and a catch, but that was the process weight. So they're pulling in like 10,000 pounds of fish, or tons I should say, pounds ain't much, of fish, and, and, and what they're not using is just thrown out to the ocean to rot. And, and it does, what, what good does that do for anybody, right? So it just, they made a mess, everything, the trawlers used to come in, you know, they, they, they raped the Grand Banks, and they came into the inland fishing too. Because I remember at Fort Amherst, we'd see the boats out there. And we'd see the Coast Guard net out there too, just watching and doing nothing. And you can't blame the Coast Guard, because they were just under orders from who? From Ottawa. So we blame Ottawa, because Ottawa let this happen. These foreigners came in. Ottawa was too afraid that they might, oh my, offend them. Well, you're lucky you got me around now, boys, because I offend everybody. I don't mind offending them. They want to hurt Newfoundland, I'll offend them, I'll offend them double. So what was happening, they were letting it, letting it happen. And they fished and fished and fished. And the biggest year of their fishing was apparently 1968 when they pulled in 810,000 tons of fish. And they want to blame Newfoundland for the, the decimation of the fishery? 810,000 tons? 500,000 people in Newfoundland didn't do that. That was those factory boats. They took 810,000 tons of fish out of, out of there, but they figure in 15 years those boats pulled out more than Newfoundland did in 150 years previous. In 15 years. They figured that they pulled out 40 generations of fish in 15 years, decimated the fishery. But in fact, by 1993, they, they brought in a cod moratorium. We couldn't fish anymore because six of the major population areas were decimated. The... Uh, um, the biomass, spawning biomass was down by 75, not 275%, but by 75%, so it was only a quarter of it left. And in some areas, like up in the northern Atlantic, that was down to, down to 1%. It was destroyed, completely destroyed. And then Ottawa cancelled the fishery on us. 
So Newfoundland's industry got raped by the Europeans, Ottawa allowed it to happen and then punished Newfoundland for it afterwards. And it took to 2011 before the stocks were increasing to the point where they, they figured it was going to be a real recovery. And that's quite a bit now. But it doesn't end there now, does it? Because we had another big industry that had the same thing happen to. It's called the sealing industry. And the same thing happened in this boat at the same time. Because these ships that were, they were using factory ships for the, uh, the fishing, well, with a little bit of, of re-rigging, they used them for sealing too. And Norway was sending over ships. Norway. They're not ours. That's not Newfoundland. That's a European nation. Was coming over into our waters upon our ice flows. And it was hunting our seals and taking them back. And they did to destroy it again. And, and again, it started about the same time. And by, uh, by 1966, there were only 2 million seals left. Now, populations are back up to 6 million and growing. And we have to watch them now because there's no more polar bears or, or killer whales to, to predate them. And there's not enough fish really left to feed them because the fish stocks aren't up yet the way they should be. And the sealing was a big industry for us. It was the second largest industry, and a lot of guys would fish in the summer, seal in the winter, and it was very dangerous. Out in the ice, weather, out in the North Atlantic, in the ocean, it wasn't safe. A lot of guys lost their lives, got injured. We just put up a, a memorial there for the 1914 disaster that we all remember. Well, we don't remember personally, but we, we keep it in our hearts. And I think that's one of the reasons the Newf Newfoundland is a little bit tighter than the rest, is that we, we face more hardships and... and you know, you know when people are going out that they might not be coming back. So you're going to hang on to them a little bit tighter while they're here. I, I don't know if you, the rest of you travel around Canada a lot, but you, you'll find that Newfoundland is a little closer and a little friendlier. And hangs on to each other and is more welcoming. And I think that's probably part of it is the hardship that we've all shared, right, in, in the past. It built us a little bit different culture than the rest. Now these Norwegians, it doesn't end there with them, right? They, they, they've got a, a, a treaty signed with Russia, of all people. And Russia, Mr. Putin now, see Russia, they, they, they've always been in a Cold War with us in one way or another, right? They talk about Cold War with the United States, but we've been involved too. And we're involved more of in an um, industry way. Now what we find, as Mr. Matroykin, when he uh, defected from Russia, brought a bunch of documents. Some of those documents proved that Greenpeace was actually funded by Russia. That's where they got their seed money and got going in the 70s, was Russia. And they were trying to promote Greenpeace, hoping that Greenpeace would shut down North American industry. And they're still doing that kind of thing. I mean, they're, they're sponsoring anti-fracking campaigns and anti-oil sands because they don't want us producing oil and natural gas because every barrel of oil we produce and bring to market is one they can't. And it's the same with OPEC. And we'll get into that in a minute. Now... You know, they went against the seal hunt. Greenpeace went against the sealing. And and Europe is banning seal imports in North America. Well, who's doing that? Why would, who, who's sponsoring that? Well, that's that's Russia and Norway. Why? Because they got this, their own seal industry with their great big ships. They've got their seals there that they're killing. And they can't come over now because we kind of, we're stopping them a little bit from that. But they're still, they got their seal industry. And they don't want our seals going to market because every seal we bring to market one day don't, right? So it's kind of dirty that way. And now we get to the oil and gas. Well, Ottawa, in all their grand wisdom, teaming up with foreigners and allowing it to happen, destroyed Newfoundland's fishery. Then they destroyed Newfoundland seal fishery. And then when we found that oil off the ground, off the, the coast there in Hibernia and stuff, they tried to take that from us too, but we fought that successfully. We had to fight for that. You know, you old timers remember that. They were going to try and take it from us. They were going to try and take all the oil rights and everything from Newfoundland. They didn't want us to have a bit of it. But we fought it. We went to court. We fought it. We won. So that's our oil now. Well, guess what? We got more oil. And... There's a big bunch of oil that's actually onshore inland shale gas kind of oil. And it's up along the west coast. It runs from, you know, St. George's Stephenville area all the way up to past Gross Moor and all the way up the coast. There's over 700,000 acres of oil producing shale there. Well, guess what we found out in a telegram in Newfoundland 
just ran a story on this. Good for them. Well done. I think everybody should, t you know, give them a hand and go read your paper because they, they expose something that's hurt Newfoundland. Apparently, OPEC over in Qatar, and Qatar is also famous for sponsoring all these anti-fracking, anti-Western oil, um, met with UNESCO and is now paying them off to go lobby the federal government, here we go again, to lobby the federal government to ban fracking in Newfoundland. Well, why? I mean, we have a moratorium on it right now until more evidence comes in. Well, we don't need more evidence because I'll give you a little bit of evidence. In the United States alone, there are over one million fracked wells. And of those one million plus wells, there have been zero documented reports of any groundwater contamination whatsoever. It's not a danger. It's all done well. When the water they use, they do what's called zero discharge, which means they stick the water in, when the water comes out, they filter it out, and then they reuse it again. And the way fracking works is like all the layers of rock are tight together like pages in a book, so the oil goes real slow and gas through it. So the, the, the layers are there and they're cracked and the stuff goes through the cracks. So what you do is you force water down under high pressure and it opens those cracks up a little bit. And when they open up, a fine sand goes in with it. And you let the water come out of it and those cracks stay open just a little bit bigger than they were before. Making like more porous for the oil to come through. It works really great. And it's liberating North America. You look at the, uh, the shale gas up in, in Pennsylvania and that. And how well they're doing. You know, and you look at Nova Scotia, there's, there's arguments over, you know, uh, First Nations rights and stuff. And that's that's a whole different world altogether, right? That's a totally different topic. I'm talking about the industry in, in, in itself. And Newfoundland has an oil and gas industry. And we can have an onshore oil and gas industry. Now, this area I'm talking about on the West Coast, and, and we kind of know it was there for a long time because... You know, there's always, you know, you see in St. In St. George's Harbor, I remember seeing some oil, and I asked my father about it, if that was like leaks from the, the, the ships from the gypsum mine. He said, no, that, those, that oil had been there long before there were ever any ships in. He said, there's oil underneath the, the, the bay on the coast here. And sure enough, there is. And you know how much oil is in there? They figure there's over 23 billion barrels of oil there on the West Coast. And now OPEC... It's trying to shut it down. Why? Because our oil, every barrel we sell is a barrel they don't. And that's really all it's about. They don't care about the environment or gross more national park or water tables. They just care about stopping us from producing oil. If they can keep the oil sands oil from hitting the, the shores, you close down the pipelines, Keystone and Northern Gateway pipelines, if they can keep them closed down, then that's oil that they get to sell and we don't. And that's really all it's about. All these protesters, a lot of them, they're professional protesters. They don't have other jobs. They don't come, come from their job and go protest. This is what they do. They go from protest to protest, setting up signs and locking themselves with equipment, all the rest of it. And they're actually being paid by people like OPEC and Vladimir Putin and all the rest of them. And they're getting caught now because these, there's so much of it going on, it's kind of hard to, to, to cover the money trail. And even NATO has figured that out. Ezra Levant wrote a book on it, on his ethical oil. And the difference between the oil that we produce and the oil that's produced in OPEC countries and, and the efforts that they're doing to try and stop us from producing. And there was another group of, of reporters went and they approached some of these anti-fracking movie makers like Ed Begley Jr. and Mariel Hemingway and them and said, Hey, I'm going to do anything undercover. And he said, We're actually from OPEC and we don't care about the environment. We just care that you don't sell oil because when you sell it, we can't. And these people said, fine, we don't care where the money coming from. We're, we're just eager to destroy the North American oil and gas industry. Now, isn't that wonderful? How about, how's that for homegrown terrorism for you, guys? Eh? And then they're coming and trying to destroy Newfoundland. Well, Newfoundland's had two major industries destroyed by foreign intervention and complicitness by Ottawa. We've lost, we lost a great fishery and we lost a great sealing industry all because of them. And now they're coming in and trying to take our oil and gas well buys. We're not going to let it happen. And the only reason we got a Libertarian Party being built in Newfoundland right now is that the others aren't doing nothing. All they're doing is sitting under duff, a bunch of fancy lawyers, taking our taxes, paying off their buddies, and doing nothing for us, running deficits. And we got oil. We shouldn't be running a deficit. Ever. 
We don't need to be in debt. That's the last thing we need. And now we got this oil on the west coast. There's 23 billion barrels there, and you figure there's a billion that they can pull out right away. A billion barrels of oil, and it's around 100 bucks a barrel. That's a hundred billion dollars of industry for Western Newfoundland, Stephenville, Cornerbrook, St. George's, Flats Bay. Are you guys, you guys listen to me? Marshall's Brook people are living out there. Hey, all you fellers in Seal Rocks. That's your jobs. And we're not talking minimum wage jobs. These are oil jobs. There's jobs drilling. There'll be jobs on the fracking. There'll be jobs on the processing. There'll be jobs on service, on water trucks. There's going to be all kinds of extra business for feeding people and bringing stuff in and, and transportation. That's $100 billion worth of industry ready to go in western Newfoundland and, and they're sitting on their hands and they're holding your jobs back from you. And people like OPEC and UNESCO and Ottawa are trying to destroy Newfoundland's oil industry because they're afraid we're going to take a, add a little bit of competition to the mix and take a few barrels of oil off their bottom line. I'm mad and I hope you're mad too. I really want to make you mad here because when you get mad guys that's when you're going to start doing something. I want you to start making some phone calls. I want you to phone your MHA. I want you to phone your MPs. I want you to talk to the mayors. Get the mayor of Stephenville. The mayor of, of, of Cornerbrook involved. Mayor of St. George's. Get them involved. Get them making phone calls and talking to the paper. Talk to the papers and the Western Star and the Telegram. And go to VOCM. They're a great bunch of guys. And get talking to them. Even phone CBC. And tell them that you want Ottawa and OPEC to keep their nose out of Newfoundland's industry and out of Newfoundland's economics and out of Newfoundland's business altogether because it's none of their business. It's your oil, it's your land, it's your industry and we're not going to let them do this to us again. And we got the, uh, the Libertarian Party in Newfoundland forming now. We're going to get us some candidates and run in some elections because we're going to change things. We're going to bring in a small government. We're going to bring in accountability and transparency. Not this Bill 29 crap that we've been seeing. i got another video on that. It's about a half hour talking about the insanity of that. Well, like, who brought that in? They're probably, you know, well, they should be going to jail for that kind of stuff. It's ridiculous. Government cover-ups, what it is. You know, selling off your information for nothing. Giving you no control over it. Taking it from you. Treating you like human chattel. And covering up everything they do so you can't even look into it for two elections after they're gone. It's ridiculous. We have to fix this kind of thing. A libertarian party will do that. Small government. Let No intervention whatsoever is what we want. Get rid of the taxes. Stop spending money on stuff that don't do nothing for nobody. Stop putting your buddies in these fancy six-digit income jobs. Because that's what's going on. we got to fix this. We can't be like the others. Like the PC party in... in, in the Newfoundland's in shambles. The Liberals, well, we see what the Liberals do. Just look at Ontario when they're $278 billion debt. You want that? You want some of that? The NDP never run nothing. And they're all the same. When one gets in, it just runs the programs the other one had. All it does is replaces the high-paying jobs from the other guy's buddies with their buddies. Just back and forth and in and out and no changes. We want change. We want a party that's going to stand up and say, Hey, that's our oil there in the West Coast. It's our industry. And we're not going to let Ottawa take it. We're certainly not going to let OPEC walk in and take that from us. That's ours. That's $100 billion of ready-to-go industry that's being kept from Western Newfoundland. That's jobs, people. That's income. That's your livelihood. That's the future of your children. And you want to talk to people talking about fracking? And I'll tell you something else about the, the, the technology of fracking. Do you know where that oil is? When you drill a well for water, you go a couple hundred feet. Sometimes a really, really deep well, you go about 300 feet, 400 feet. That's where your groundwater is, the water table. The oil is a mile down. This stuff is between four and 6,000 feet down. You're drilling, through, you're drilling way past. It, packing it in, casing it. Like I said, there's never out of a million existing fracked wells in the United States since the 1960s, there's been zero incident of groundwater contamination. You don't need to do more research than that. That's over a million times it's worked perfectly and it's never failed. What more research do you want? Let Newfoundland 
develop their industry. Let them develop the oil and gas industry and don't let Ottawa and OPEC turn this into another fiasco like they did with our fishing and our seals. It's ridiculous. We've got to stand against this now. We've got to stand against it. And here I stand, people. Here I stand. I'm coming at you, starting up a libertarian party in Newfoundland. I'm not the only one now. Don't you worry about that. we got quite a few guys on the ground. To stand against this kind of stuff. To stand for Newfoundland. To stand for Newfoundland people. To stand for our industry. To stand for our economy. And to stand up for our children. I ain't doing this for me. I'm doing this for everybody. I'm doing this for the kids. I'm doing this for the future because I don't want to see Newfoundland end up in, in a toilet bowl economy like we are seeing in Ontario. And that's what's going to happen if we don't stop them from doing these things and we, and we let them thrash our industry. 23 billion barrels, 100 billion ready to go, or a billion ready to go, sorry, 100 billion in industry that we could have right now in western Newfoundland with the jobs that goes with it. Think about it. Do something about it. Do something about it. Make the phone calls. Get get people talking. And let's fight this together and let's win. Because we're going to win. If we fight together, we're going to win. We're going to win.